To a certain degree, this society exercises control over every aspect of our life. Body, consciousness, will, and many others. If there is something that qualifies for the role of evil incarnate, then without doubt, it is this society. You can hardly find a better candidate. All these humiliations, bullying, psychological traumas are merits of the society. Body constraints, submission poses, lifted shoulders as a protection from a presumable cuff on the nape are all the society stamps. Even teachers that envenom our life and parents that damage our psyche are manifestations of the society. All mental guidelines to become a good person were inserted in our heads by the society with one and only one purpose, to make social slaves out of us. Following these rules is a perfect way to achieve nothing in life. There is a cherished wish that blazes inside each and every person to bring changes to this world, as all humans are creators by nature. But in order to protect itself by all possible means, the society di diverts this aspiration. An especially funny example of this phenomenon is so-called spiritual growth, as this is the main drain of people's wishes. Every man is eager to change something, but the society tells him to develop spiritually, advises him to meditate, practice yoga, and go to church. And many people do it for years, but is there a result? Where is the growth? Their justification for themselves is usually consists of claims about getting an out-of-body experience, opening chakras, and so on. However, as sad as it might be, there are no real changes in the world in their lives. Little by little, it dawns on certain people what a horrible prison for their personalities the society is. Such people with all their might try to break ranks with it. But, as I have told, you can't be absolutely free from the society. People who strive towards liberty from the society end up being fringe elements. Some start acting really weird, sort of dancing completely naked at the town square. Naturally, a question comes about how to gain distance from the society without losing connection, as it's the source of resources and uh, options for personal realization. Indeed, influence of the society is deteriorating, but this is inevitable evil, as we are not able to do anything substantial in this world without its help. So, at this point, it's time to mention the idea of a social agreement. Oddly enough, all these fake social stereotypes and dogmas that have been accepted by us at face value are clauses of the agreement. In other words, We've been told that if we behave well, there will be given a candy. Work hard and honestly, and you will achieve success. It was kind of an agreement, and we voluntarily accepted the terms. But eventually, we're able to place in doubt these past commitments. All right, I've not been staying up late. I've been eating greens. I've been shining in school. Where are my candies? I've been hardworking. I've been a decent member of the society. Where is my money, success, and happiness? It turns out that success is achieved by those who actually have not followed the social guidelines. Of course, there is an excuse that is immediately given to you. Like, uh, those people are mean and uh, disreputable, period. But the evidence of their success can be neither hidden nor explained. Therefore, after we've come to this way of putting it, we become able to break the agreement. I've been waiting for a long time to get my candies. Now, sorry guys, but I'm out. I've been working desperately for years, but where is my pot of gold? I regret to say it, but our agreement is terminated. However, all these are just words. In order to be truly able to break this social agreement, you sincerely have to admit being a big dummy. Admit being a fool because you believed in all this crap. It's not that easy and there is where pridefulness and humility come to mind again. A man filled with pridefulness is not able to admit being wrong and stupid. 
and uh, consequently he is bound to continue adhering to social principles and be absolutely sure that they are rightful. In contrast, a potentially curable person is ready to accept his past delusions. Moreover, it is difficult uh, to accept having been stupid only the first time. Gradually, it becomes a norm. As a result, we start to feel what Castaneda meant when he was speaking of controlled stupidity. Breaking social agreements is an echo way to gain distance from the society without falling into marginalization. We continue performing the same rituals and following the rules, but we are no longer dependent on them. We can see clearly all absurdity of this stuff, but there is understanding that we obey only because it's to our advantage for the time being. It means if those rules stop being means to an end, we can freely deviate from them. Because this is what really free men do. They have right to choose what to follow and adhere to. By comparison, a social slave is not even able to place a question mark over something in the first place. The only thing that he can do is to follow an agenda and convince himself of its rightfulness. It's a daunting task to separate oneself from the society, but when we put a question in the context of social agreements, we acquire the understanding that, in fact, we are the only possible judges here, and we have the right to terminate any covenant. As it's absurd to keep your side of a bargain if the other side has been lying from the very beginning. The society is inevitable evil, and whole our past life that was under its influence was within a norm. But you will have to make a choice whether to stay a naive child waiting for a candy for his good behavior, or to become an adult who decides for himself what to do and believe in. Parting with the society is a painful process and can be compared with the striking out on our own when we leave our parents and the ancestral home. In this regard, our life is the same in every aspect. You are forced to choose between something detrimental and something complicated. But this is the only choice.